Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you. Lord, truly, we are getting blessed and edified. It is your word that brings this truth to us. So we say thank you. So today I declare burdens are being lifted, yokes are being destroyed by the power in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. I've been sharing some amazing truths with you. And I know things are happening in your life already. And I would really like to hear from you. I want to hear your testimonies. Now, you don't know what testimonies does to a preacher. It's proof. Now, not because he is in doubt, but it's proof that you are listening and following, putting it to work, and then you're seeing the result. Praise God. Yeah. So I invite you to send in your testimony. Now, if you have questions also, don't hesitate. I try to personally answer every question that comes in. Praise God. Now, some of you that have sent in questions, you know, you know that's true. Now, there are certain questions that I'll, I'll just read it, and I'll just know, okay, look, I've already dealt with this. If you're listening to tomorrow's message, you would already see that this, this question has been dealt with. Now, those are the questions I don't, I may not be quick to respond to. Or may just, like, just keep listening. See? But with genuine questions that I know, okay, no, I need to pay attention to it. I actually do that. So, don't, don't, um, don't be shy of it. You can send in your questions, send in your testimony. Like I've always told you, subs subscribe to our YouTube channel and be receiving the message straight as they come. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So I was showing you something yesterday on your role and then the role of the angels. See, there is a role you have to play and that you working with the Spirit of God and He bringing to pass what God have planned for you. I want to read something to you in, in the book of Acts chapter 27. Now, this was Paul's story. Paul, Paul. Now, Paul was being transported to Rome on a ship as a prisoner because he had appealed to Caesar. So, on their way, they had this boat mishap. Now, watch this from verse 21. Acts chapter 27 and verse 21. But after long abstinence from food, then Paul stood in the midst of them and said, Men, you should have listened to me and not have sailed from Crete and incurred this disaster and loss. Now, if you read the story, they had, Paul had told them at a certain point, Look, don't sail. Wait. You guys say, Who are you? Are you a sailor? Are you a shipman? Are you, did you study sea waves or whatever? I said, Well, no. But hey, I heard from the word of the Lord that this is not a good time to say they shut up their prisoner like you. They carried them into the boat and then they, they had trouble. And then Paul now spoke and said, he says, Man, you should have listened to me and not have sailed from Crete and incurred this disaster and waste. Now watch this. And now I urge you to take heart. Now, sometimes as God's children, even as ministers, we make this mistake. You give someone counsel, the person doesn't receive it. The person now gets into trouble and runs back to you. And then you now say, but I told you what to do, you didn't do. So what's, what do you want me to do? So I say, ah, I'm so sorry. Ah, there is nothing I can do. Just go, go and suffer your trouble. No. They say the mercy of God, as long as there is life, the mercy of God is still available for that person, even for you. You see, they, they, they should have listened to Paul, but they didn't. So now they have lost some things. See, and then Paul now says, And now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you. Now, this is where Paul, I told you a story on, I think that was on Friday last week. When you're in a place, you take charge of that atmosphere. When we fly in an aircraft, 
I don't know who is in that aircraft, but I take charge of that aircraft. You see, because I paid my fare. Are you getting what I'm saying? I paid for that seat. For that moment, that whole aircraft comes under my authority. I'm not the one flying it. The pilot is flying it. But hear me. I may be sitting on the back seat. But I take charge of that whole aircraft. The angels of God see that this is my vehicle right now. Praise God. Yeah. And every life on that aircraft comes under my authority. But that's how a child of God reasons. Why? Because of the angels. See? So, Paul says, hey, relax. If you had listened to me, you shouldn't have set sail. Now, the same thing with a vehicle, not just aircraft. You're traveling by road, you enter a bus, whatever vehicle you use, the same thing. You take charge. Say, Father, I take charge of this journey. And I declare this journey is smooth. There is no challenge on the way. I clear the way of every evil. And you just drive smoothly. Listen, let's get this walking consciously for us. Till the point that someone wants to travel. Sorry, is there any born again believer in this, in this vehicle? Oh yeah, come in, don't be afraid. Ah, yeah, praise God. <laughs> yeah! You know, one time I was flying one day and then, and then you know, I sat down in the plane. And then my phone rang. And, and someone called me and said, ah. Pastor, I just saw you enter my plane. I said, oh, right. He said, ah, Pastor, now that you are here, I know we are secured and safe. I said, before I go, <laughs> praise God. Ah, it's the truth. But see, every believer ought to reason this way. I remember one time I boarded a flight, and, and just before we took off, there was some challenge with the plane. And then, I mean, people got furious, and I ah, no, I'm dropping, I'm dropping, I'm dropping. I just said, Lord, what's going on here? And Lord also spoke to me and said, everything is fine. Everything is under control. I said, oh, okay. So nothing to worry about. He said, nothing to worry about. So I came back and I sat down. Some people actually came down from the plane. See, they had to call back the plane. It didn't take off anymore. When turned and went back to the... And then, because some people insisted that they would drop. So those ones came down. And then we took off. We took off and landed safely. <laughs> Praise God. So, so, why did they drop? They were scared. But all I needed to know is, okay, Lord, at this point, see, and that's one thing you learn. When you're doing something, no matter the fate that you carry, when you're doing something and there is a challenge, learn this. Immediately pause and ask the Lord, is there something I'm missing? Get clearance from him telling you. Because you don't do, ha ha, faith, nothing will happen, nothing will happen. You see, he makes, when you see a physical challenge or a physical um, obstacle, that's the point for you to ask again. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a point for you to ask again. Even if the Lord had told you, enter this place. The moment you see an obstacle, you say, Lord, what's going on? See? What's going on? Now, what does it cost you to say that to the Lord? It doesn't take two hours of praying in tongues. It just takes what I just say, Lord, what is going on? And you listen. I said, son, don't board this flight again. Okay, thank you, sir. And then you move. I said, no, there is nothing wrong. Said, okay, thank you, sir. And then you relax. Now, let's, let's, let's read this now. Thank you, Jesus. It says, verse 23, And now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the sheep. Paul had to negotiate this out with the Lord because of their disobedience. But guess what? Look at what he says next. Thank you, Holy Spirit. For there stood by me this night an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve, saying, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all those who sail with you. Therefore, take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. He had heard from the Lord. Now, this was not what he heard before the journey. Before the journey, he had heard the Lord. Telling them, Paul, 
don't sell. But you see, because he was not the one in authority, and then he was a prisoner, so he had no choice in the game. You see, sometimes we get to situations like this. You say, oh, I was working with my boss, and, and my boss, I was tra traveling with my boss, and then the Lord told me that this, 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 this vehicle is going to have an issue. But I, I mentioned it to my boss, I said, do you, do you really think we should go? Say, my friend, enter, let's go. I had no choice. Yes, the fact that you had no choice, you still can do something. What is it? Take authority. That's what Paul began to do. He took authority. Before, he said, when they disobeyed. Now, that's one thing you need to understand. I remember one time I was traveling, you know, many years ago. And the moment this, the journey started, the word of the Lord came to me. He said, you're going to have trouble on this journey. And I'm like, oh, why? Why didn't you tell me before we started? Now, we're already on the way. Why didn't you tell me? He said, why? And then the Lord told me where the problem was coming from. He said, you need to address this now. So I addressed it. And then, then I began to say, Lord, so what do I do? And I began to speak in tongues under my breath. I said, Lord, you know, we can't get into trouble. I've seen this situation. I've handled it. So we just can't get into trouble. And guess what? You know, while we're going on that journey, one of that bus just came behind, behind overtook us and ran straight into <laughs> Amrabah's ahead of us and our driver saw it quick enough to turn the bus and that's how we're saved from that see so so the spirit of god works in us the fact that he showed you something before and you didn't do anything about it or or you couldn't do anything about it it doesn't mean it's all over for you don't ever let fear come into your heart so the moment they set out sail on that because paul had no choice in this case, he was a prisoner. And then Paul began to talk to the Lord and say, Lord, so what next? What do we do now? Because we, we can't die. We can't die. He began to intercede for everyone. And then he says, look at it. For there stood by me this night. That was not when they set, started the sail. This night means we we're already on the journey. He said, for there stood by me this night an angel of the Lord to whom I belong and to whom I serve, saying... Because the angel was there with him. Do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. What was the angel doing? The angel was telling him what is on the script. Paul, you are to be brought before Caesar. So fear not. <laughs> Holy Kabasu Tembra. Now I say this you know, to, to, to those close to me. I don't embark on a journey until I see the end of the journey. Because if, if I get an invitation to go somewhere, I, I, I spend time before the Lord. I say, okay, Lord, what, what, what's your take? You want me to go? Or even if I want to travel somewhere for any reason, should I go? And then sometimes I, I see a vision of me in that place doing it. I say, okay, fine, thank you. Lord. And then we go. See, that's how it works. So now he says, the angel said to him, you will, be, you will be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God, why did the angel say indeed? Because this was false prayer. Indeed, God has granted you all those who sail with you. This also means all those who fly with you. This also means all those who are traveling with you. Praise <laughs> God. Yeah. Don't be selfish. Intercede. Intercede for people. But guess what the story here? The angel was there. Paul didn't start praying. Oh God, send your angel to deliver. The angel was there. And the angel said, Ah, nah, Paul, don't be afraid. You will surely be brought before Caesar. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he told him, Well, I don't see us getting there in this ship, but we'll all get there. No life will be lost. Why? Why? Because he says, God has indeed granted to you all those who sail with you. Question now is, what will you do with them? And this included the officials, you know. So Paul could have said, ah, Lord, save the prisoners. Kill the officials so that we'll be free. But that's not the heart of God. Praise God. My time is up. Listen, the Lord bless you. Let the Lord open your eyes to these things that I've been talking about and begin to receive results in Jesus' name.
Amen.